welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today we are making a soap using this fragrance from Nature's Garden, Hot Pink Pomegranate. This smells fantastic, and the name kind of cracks me up. I have never soaked with this before, but the reviews said it behaved really well. Uh, the Nature's Garden site says it doesn't cause rising, acceleration, separation, any of that stuff. No discoloration. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, it smells fantastic. I can't wait to do this. It just smells, you know, fruity and delicious. So for the color, hot pink pomegranate, I'm going to be using my Hollywood pink from Nurture Soap. This is such a pretty pow pink. It's just bright and lovely. It's very saturated pink. I think it's beautiful. So that's going to be the swirl, just one color swirl. I'm not going to use any titanium dioxide because this uh, fragrance doesn't discolor. So we're going to let it go natural with a hot pink swirl in it. And I haven't decided what I'm going to do on top yet, but probably a simple top. I just really want the fragrance and that pop of pink color to come through. That's the star of the show. So today's soap is going to be a coconut milk soap, and I'm going to be using coconut milk powder. And I'll talk about doing powder versus milk, liquid milk or milk and oil. I'll talk about that when we get to the additives uh, segment of this video. But right now I have to get everything pulled together and let's come back and make some hot pink pomegranate soap. All right, we are back with our hot pink pomegranate. I have the fragrance already in here in the oils. And now we're gonna add our dry ingredients. And let me tell you, this is the easiest way to add milk to your soaps. If you've never done a milk soap and you're intimidated about scorching or overheating or freezing it and mixing the lye and all that, powdered milk is the way to go. This is coconut milk. You could use buttermilk, goat milk powder, even just regular old milk powder. Um, powders soap beautifully and I think you get the same luxurious milky feel in the finished bar when it lathers. I love it. Uh, so you could reconstitute this in water, um, follow the directions and make the coconut milk and then do the milk and oil or freeze it and do the lye really slowly and do a full milk. You could definitely do that starting with a powder but I think adding the powder right on into your oils is just easy makes a great bar and I love it. So I'm gonna be adding at a rate of about one teaspoon per pound of oils in here. Maybe a little bit more or a little bit less. This is a two tablespoon scoop and I get my containers here with, they come with the scoops from Dollar General. They're over, I don't know, in the storage container area. And they're very like they're three or four dollars for one of these and it comes with the scoop i love these for my dry ingredients you see them in pretty much every soap video <laughs> so let's add that was the coconut milk powder here goes the colloidal oats and here goes the kale and clay and while i was getting all my ingredients and everything ready i was thinking that i would like to do some piping on top of this soap so before i blend that in let me show you i have this tiny little star tip it is a wilton 21 yeah wilton 21 tip and i'm going to do tiny little rosettes down on the top of here um when i uh, so i will save off a little bit of the soap batter and i'll let that thicken up i don't make a special frosting it's just this soap and i'll let it thicken up to piping consistency and we'll do a little bit of piping on top because the colors are so pretty you know that pink i just couldn't resist let's get this blended up so we can get to making soap back and here's my lye solution that does have cane sugar, tussa silk fibers, and sodium lactate in there. And I forgot to mention another nice thing about milk powders is that you can still do a really steep water discount and get all the milky goodness. And I like to soak with a steep water discount. Um, so <laughs> let's add this in here. We're going to get up to a nice emulsion and then we will blend that pink color to a good light trace before we get to pouring and doing our hanger swirl and all of that and then I've got to wait for the frosting to get thick enough all the soapy goodness so let's get to it here and one of the ways you can tell if you have emulsion is start stirring and pause and if you see oil rise to the top and it looks like it's separating you don't have an emulsion emulsion means that all the oil has combined with all the lye and they're bonded together um, which is different than a trace. Trace is when it starts thickening up like a pudding, uh, different stages of pudding, really runny to a thick. Those are different stages of trace. But emulsion, you definitely want emulsion before you pour your soap or mix your 
you know, when I split this off, I want to make sure it's all blended up and it doesn't separate. minutes and I'm waiting for this to get thick enough and so what I'm gonna do is push my pink over to the side here and get my uncolored portion in there so I can have two colors into the piping bag um, they'll blend a little bit but I think this is gonna be really pretty when we go to bag this up and it'll give those little rosettes dimension to have a couple of colors so now we just need to wait for this to thicken a little bit more It's the next day. It's been about 24 hours. Ta-da! I am so happy. I tell you what, after I piped the little swirls and I'm like, oh, I want to do more. So I went and did little dots and, and I just really had to talk myself out of stopping when I did. And I'm so glad that I didn't overdo it. I love the top. It's just given me all the happies. So let's get in here and see how those swirls came out on the inside. back with the lovely Olga and I'm gonna be honest with you I think this may be one of my favorite soap tops that I've done in quite a while I'm so tickled with it there's just the tiniest little bit of soda ash on a few of the rosettes um, I did cover this with the wood lid and that was it so this went through gel phase um, but that was it and I didn't gloss it up this morning I think it looks fabulous I didn't want to mess with a good thing so I am just loving the top it's just I don't know what it is about this top that's making me so tickled, but I am loving it. And, oh, the swirls, so pretty. And this pomegranate scent is really, really nice. We are definitely going to have some soapy patterns at the end of this also. 
Oh, it's just swirly goodness. You know, this kind of top makes me think of ice cream too. I've got, I'm thinking of different uh, different things I can do with this soap design. These kind of just look like little ice cream sundaes to me. So fun. And it's this fragrance is definitely fruity, but it's it's got a little complexity to it. I would not, other than the pink here, I would say this is a unisex scent. Um, my husband would use this bar. I think it's fabulous. So let's get on to the next loaves and see how these swirls came out. All right, let's get into the next loaf. And you can, <laughs> you can see how not straight that line is. But once the bars are cut, that waviness isn't going to make a bit of difference. So I kind of cracked myself up when I was doing it. I cannot draw a straight line to save my life. I <laughs> don't have that gift of precision. I would not make a good architect, I guess, unless I had a ruler. Then I could do it. But this uh, coconut milk powder soaked wonderfully. This fragrance was really nice to work with. It did not speed uh, trace, but it did move along, so which was great because the piping came up to consistency um, in a really nice amount of time. I didn't have to wait around forever. Sometimes when I have a slow moving fragrance, I have, my soap piping bags will sit for hours. This was about ready to go as soon as I was done with the dishes. But uh, yeah, it was, I would not have wanted to have a more intricate swirling going on. Um, so I wouldn't call it a fast mover, but it's not a slow mover either. It smells fantastic though. So I would definitely recommend this fragrance if you like a fruity, but not, it's not a sweet fruity. It, it's more, it's got a little more depth than just sweetness of fruit, but it's got a fruity tinge to it. I love it. All right, we've got our last loaf going here. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. So I just wanna encourage you, if you have never soaked with a milk powder before, or if you've been afraid to try a milk soap, I encourage you to give it a try. Um, any milk powder, they're so easy to soak with, and the lather on this will, I would put it head to head with any milk soap. I think the lather on powdered milk soaps is beautiful. So I encourage you to give it a try if you've never done that before. And have some fun. There's a lot of different milk powders out there to choose from, you know, you can get really creative. Well, I thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you taking the time to be with me and I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'm gonna let these sit for a few hours and we'll come back and bevel and stamp and all the good stuff that goes along with soap making. I hope you have a wonderful day.